Okay, here we go with another test of my pancake coil, my 10 inch diameter pancake coil. And this time we're using the 2500 watt uh, ZVS induction heater. And we're going to see if we get any better uh, heating results for sheet metal pieces than we did with the 1000 watt unit. Power on. Water temperature meter on. Four amperes of idle current with this coil. Water temperature 23.3, 53 seconds into the test. What we're going to do is take this piece of coffee can and uh, just lay it on there and see how much current we get and just kind of what happens with just uh, putting it up to the bare coil. We have uh, 18.718 kilohertz right now and again 4 amps of idle current. So here we go, just laying this on here. We got, when we did this with the uh, 1000 watt unit, we think we got 25, 28 amps, 20, 25 amps. Right now, 26 amps. Down to 20 amps already. I'm holding it up just a little bit off of the induction coil. Now we're down to 14 amps. 18, I don't know why we came back up. We came up to 18 amps. 16, frequency 19.178, 28 amps, wow. 16, 14, 14, must be getting close to the Curie point. 16. Anyway, kind of got hot. I'm going to try that again with some of these lights off here. I don't want to cook my insulation because some of this isn't the greatest insulation. Back up 20 amps. 19.4 kilohertz. 18 amps. I don't know if I'd say that's glowing or not. But it certainly all isn't up to the Curie point that you'd need for uh, annealing. It's starting to glow where I can see it, but it's still not that hot. Okay. 19.22. All right, so it didn't glow immediately and get super hot. So now I'm going to lay a piece of this insulating material on top of the coil. And this way I can set this thing right down flat on there, or as flat as I can get it, 18 amps, so on. And now I'm going to lay another piece of insulation on there. And the idea here and you, is to hold the heat in, and I can already see glowing going on on the uh, upper edge here. 16 amps, going to lay this on the top and give it uh, 20, 30, 40 seconds, uh, 18 amps, still 18, 17, 18 amps, take a peek, yeah, it's going pretty good, at least at the edges, and it, this is a little rounded, it isn't quite flat, that's 20 seconds, well, that got pretty hot, sorry about my cheap insulation, but the binder burns out, but you can see that it got pretty hot there, Let's give it another shot here. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Anyway, I'm going to give it like 30 seconds. Anyway, the edges did get pretty hot. And that's better than we did with the uh, 1000 watt unit. Okay, that was coffee can, and that's only maybe six, maybe not even 10 thousandths thick. This is a piece of 16 gauge material. Uh, we're going to stick that on here and see what we get. 20, 30, 40, 42 amps. Okay, we'll start with uh, the timer's at five seconds. We'll give it one minute. 22 kilohertz, 22.2 kilohertz. Water temperature's gone up to 27.
current is uh, 36 amps. 20 seconds into the test. See if I can stick a thermocouple in here, see what's happening. So it's only 200, 200 Celsius. to 12 Celsius. Two fifty Celsius. Uh, current thirty amps. Lost track, I think this almost <clears throat> two minutes. Nineteen point eight kilohertz. Take a peek. Glowing here at the edge, you can see. And that's probably hot enough to anneal right there. Let's see if I can check that very point. I got five, uh, 490, 500 Celsius. Now we're at two and a half minutes at that edge, 530 Celsius. Sorry about the smoke here, Pete. <coughs> Went back uh, 24 amps, and that happened. Uh, the fan of, of the heater or the power supply goes down when it goes below 25 amps. So now we are uh, almost three minutes into the test. I don't want to lose my thermocouple, but I do want to peek. And there we got some orange. Right on the 25, 24, 25 amp range. Now we've been three minutes in there. Oh, and I don't have it laying down on, on there. I, I've been tilting it up a little bit. Now we're back up to 32 amps. Thirty-two amps. Twenty kilohertz, twenty point seven kilohertz, three and a half minutes into the test. Glowing. Pretty good on some edges there. 630. Thirty-four amps. Four minutes into the test. I don't know if there's that much more to learn, but it's glowing pretty hot right there at the edge, that's for sure. 645. Let me pull this back out just a little bit. Poke my finger on a sharp edge. I didn't get zapped or anything. 670. Pretty much stabilized at 670. That's about what we're going to get. We're four and a half, three and a half, or four and a half minutes in. Anyway, that's kind of what we get out of that. Six hundred and thirty Celsius. So that's what we get there. Now, I know that I'm going to pretend that this is a uh, uh, a knife blade, which isn't just a strip of steel with a couple of holes in it. I just want to see what happens here. We get I don't know a couple of amps out of that. So I was just curious if something thin would would uh, would gather much energy, and it doesn't. So that's that. Last piece I have here. This is a piece of galvanized iron. I probably should not do this, but I'm going to lay this on here and see what happens. Whoa, 50 amps, easily 50 amps. 40, stop at about 45 amps, uh, 52, 
10 seconds. Twenty point six kilohertz. Starting to glow on the edge there. I don't need any zinc fumes, so I'm not going to go any further with that. But this is uh, uh, like twenty gauge, maybe twenty two gauge. That heated up pretty quick. I just don't want any more zinc in there. So the last thing I'm the last thing I'm going to do today, uh, just for grins, is uh, now I've got a piece of a coffee can, just the lid that I cut out of a coffee can. We'll stick that on here and see what that does. Okay. Starting at that's about three seconds in. That's drawing about 14 gross amps. Nineteen point three kilohertz, water thirty two point seven Celsius, twelve amps, maybe starting to glow around the edges. Let's put this insulation on it and see what it does. That was thirty nine forty seconds, so we'll give it another. 20 30 seconds and just see what happens to the can. To the can lid, I mean. 19.05 kilohertz. That's about a minute. Whoops. Oh, shit. Great. Just wiped out. Uh, some uh, fats or something uh, when that coffee can lid shorted out the coil. So that's the end of today's test, that's for sure. Interesting, the thing came back to life, 10 amps. I was surprised, I would have thought for sure we wiped out something. So, I don't know what happened, why did it work? Well, okay, we'll do it again, 14.10 minutes, 14 minutes, 10 seconds. Ah, 14 amps, 19.2. Uh, Getting red already. 12 amps. We are now one minute in, and that's what happened to the coffee can lid. Remember, this has got a two and a half inch ID, so the center didn't heat up all that much. Let's see if moving this around on here would get me any more current. And it doesn't. Centered is the highest current. Okay, and with nothing on there, 18.736 kilohertz which is where we started out at. Four amps idle current is where we started out at. Water temperature is up to 30.7. We're to start out 24, so our radiator's working well. This has uh, been, this test has been running for almost 16 minutes now. And I don't know what conclusions there are to draw. Uh, so far, I'm kind of disappointed in the pancake coil. And maybe you can find a 
uh, an application that uh, suits it. But the point is here, this is 11.75 microhenries. Uh, it only draws four amps of idle current and it runs at 18 kilohertz, which is the uh, lowest frequency, operating frequency that we've had uh, with anything to date. And it might be this low operating frequency that saved me just now when I shorted things out because um, with these lower frequencies, the gates turn on so quickly that there's hardly any linear mode time at all. Also, this power supply is actually rated for, uh, I think around, uh, I don't know, almost 60 amps or something like that. And it might have gone into current limit mode and that and the sharp gate turn on might have saved the circuit. But it certainly is working normally at this moment. End of test.